Hey beauties and welcome back to Aesthetic Chat with Kiki. This is the last episode in the SD mini series that I'm doing. I am really excited to announce this next guest. She is a lash queen and her name is Jody. She has a beautiful last name and she pronounces it perfectly for you. So I hope you all enjoy this episode. Let's jump right in. I want you to share your journey into the aesthetic industry. I am the owner of Bourgeois Lashes. I founded this company in 2017 after I got my master aesthetics license and my AA. And honestly, my journey started off because my lash trainer, she canceled on us. And so then the teacher asked me to train. And so it started off with just training and I quickly started training the classes after I graduated. And because I was training with supplies that I didn't know, I launched my own. So I didn't get a traditional starting because I jumped right into training and in product sales. And so um, I didn't really get a whole lot of experiences in services, but I found out quickly that I was a better teacher than I was a esthetician. Oh my goodness, that's kind of cool. So it sounds like, you know, starting out, going through school, getting your degree, was the end goal to kind of run your own business? I feel like in my heart of hearts, I've always wanted to be like that badass esthetician and serving the community with, you know, facials and lashes. And I just found that like being a technician is just just to be honest with you, just backbreaking. Fair, fair. It's definitely a lot physically. Yeah. And emotionally, I feel like because we see so many people and we touch so many people, and pun intended, that uh, you receive a lot of people's energy. So then if you don't cleanse, then you hold on to their emotions. If we're massaging their faces or if we're just allowing them to talk about their lives, we receive a lot of those emotions that we not necessarily are going through, but we feel them because they're in our space. Yeah. Doing face-to-face, doing all the treatment room stuff is definitely, you almost are like a therapist at some points, for sure. When you're going through the program, they don't talk about uh, like self-care when because we're taking care of people, but um, when you're going through the program, nobody talks about self-care. And a lot of the self-care is just cleansing, cleansing people's emotions out of you so that you're not carrying on to the next client or trickling into your personal life or business. It sounds like you kind of jumped right into education. So first off, so when I started college, I was like, how am I going to afford tuition, my living expenses, and then make time to actually physically go to uh, SKU? And so... I knew that I had to quit my, I had to quit whatever I was doing just to go to SKU full time. And then I had to figure out what was I going to do with the, with living expenses if if I'm going to go through a vigorous program like this. So I had to move back home with my family or really just my mom. And so I told me and my two kids into my mom's house, I went to SKU for a whole year. And so in that second phase of my program, I took the training and every single day, I practiced on somebody. I gave away so many free sets that when I finally felt confident enough to ask for like a product fee, people were very receptive and very supportive. And so that's kind of how I started my technician career. And then by the end of my program, because I was asked to train, I was still doing the lash work. And so I was trying to decide the like where my business was going as far as like, do I just want to be a technician or do I want to sell products on top of that? And it kind of just happened simultaneously. So I'm still a technician, but I think that because I'm a technician, I know what supplies we need. And so that's kind of how I birthed my product line. So I did it together. And so I started earning money quickly because I would have, I had my hands in so many pockets. So I had the lash services throughout the week, and that basically just helped support me and the kids. And then the products, I 
was able to maintain because I did training. So that helped kind of supplement the capital for the product line because I, I trained people. And then uh, I met somebody in one of my trainings and she introduced me to the instructor's license. And so I went, I was like, you know what, if I'm going to really take this to the next level, I have to legitimize my business. So I went and got an instructor's license. And so then two years into my career, I went and got an instructor's license. And then um, the college that I went to get the license from, they offered me a position before I graduated. And I found out quickly that I got a lot of leads from being a aesthetics teacher. So I was, again, still trying to, I was still been able to like maintain the product line, being a lash tech and being an educator. But because I'm an educator, I get to sell more product because I, I have customers firsthand because I'm training them throughout the program and I can sell to them on top of that. So what year did you start your business? 2017. I got my instructor's license in 2019 and then COVID hit. So then when COVID hit, <laughs> all the salons closed and I had to get really creative. And so I was like, how do I come up with a way to supply my lashes to customers uh, with a contactless way of doing business. And so one of my clients, she works at a grocery store and she said that the the number one product sold out during COVID was nail polish and eyelashes because everybody was on Zoom. And so then because of that, I launched the vending machine. I want you to kind of walk our listeners through what was it like starting a business, developing product lines, and then jumping into, you know, creating that vending machine. So a lot of the product development that I had was all a lot of trial and error. And a lot of it was testing. So spending a lot of money on testing and then um, asking other people to help me test. And then finally launching something that would sell. But ideally, if I were to give an, if if I were to give advice to somebody who is listening and wants to branch off into any type of product line, whether it's aftercare or just have retail on their shelves that is private label, or they're just trying to find um, additional income or additional streams of revenue for their business or aesthetics business, I would say that one thing that you have is a problem. So you start off with a problem. What is the issue? So whether somebody has problematic skin, somebody has short lashes, you have a solution. And that's kind of how you come up with your business niche. You have short lashes, you're extending them, right? So then you, you're providing this service that helps to solve somebody's problem. And they need to come to you because you're the expert to help with the solution. And so when I came up with the vending machine idea, it was like, how do I bring convenience, contactless, value, quality product to a customer? And I just thought, okay, so I have, I want to maximize my lash business. So I have professional lashes, but I also needed like that retail. And so anytime I come up with a product or I come up with some type of um, new platform, or new service menu, I always think of everything in threes. So you have your high, medium, low. So then you have three different price points that no matter who your customer is, you get to engage with whoever that customer is because you have three options. And then you can expand after that. Ideally, I never thought that, I, I, well, the goal was never to be a boss because I just kind of like live in this bubble of creativity. But then I, start, I did slowly start to find out that some of my ideas were catchy enough where people want to invest in, um, whether it be their time, their money, or just their interest. Um, and so I always think about um, the customer before I think about the profit margin because money will always come. It's, it's these opportunities that we don't get um, quite often that that's what we need to really jump on is the opportunity, whether it be a brand new client or a long, um, long-term long client, <clears throat> the the added value behind all of that and not thinking of the profit margin is what has really gotten me to this point of my business. Because you are more of that creative side, like you said, 
Do you have people in your corner that are helping you? Do you employ people? Do you have investors? Or is this completely ran by you? I'm it. I'm it. I don't have I don't have no man supporting my, any of the capital. I do this all by myself. Um, I do have a, a small family that I take care of, but they aren't like who I do it for. A lot of times women are like, oh, I do this for my family or my kids are watching me. And it's like, girl, nobody cares about lashes. Nobody cares about you washing somebody's face. But the fact that you get to live in a passion or the fact that you get to uh, do something that you like to do or have passion in, you get to create a living off of something you love to do. And then the people, quote unquote, that are watching or that you're being an example for get to reap the benefits off of your happiness. And so ideally, I really teach on passion. So if you're doing what you love, you don't feel like you're working. And so it allows this opp- these other opportunities to flow in because you're receptive or you're open enough to receive. And so then you you put out good work because you actually like what you're doing. So that's why I'm, I'm really big on my threes is coming up with three things that you're really good at and then you can grow. And that's the only way you're going to be able to expand is that things become so easy that you have to go and train for something else or you have to add to your uh, service menu. I think that's great advice. I absolutely agree with you. So as an educator, what is one of the biggest either misconceptions or things that you see in terms of technique that people are doing wrong? Technique, I would say they are cutting corners. I say like if you are buying from Amazon, no, not, not knocking Amazon, but like if you're buying lashes off of Amazon or solutions off of Amazon, you're getting quick bulk material and they don't have as much love and tender like care in them that um, you're just buying because of the demand or that it's cheap. So if you invest in beautiful products, your work is going to be effortless and it's going to look beautiful because you've invested a couple of extra bucks on buying something better quality or like a luxury product. Not, again, not knocking Amazon. I'm big on telling my students that now that you have that license or that you're going to have your license, that professional use only label pertains to you. So if you're buying over the counter products, you are the pro- you're the problem. Like what is Cetaphil or what is something that you can buy at Ulta going to do for your client's skin when you're supposed to be changing their skin, helping their skin heal. And um, if you're not using professional products, your your work is just, it, it's not going to show. I love Amazon too for certain things, but I you don't go to Amazon for your skincare and you shouldn't be going to Amazon for professional grade lashes. So I think that that completely makes sense to me. That's just the technique part. Now, if I were to talk about like the actual way of somebody works and this could pertain to any of us whether you're a cosmo license a nail tech or whatever but like the safety and sanitation so with safety and with safety for the client is just making sure that you're you're progressive and not aggressive uh, whether it be with like mega volume lashes for classic lashes or a superficial peel and growing them into a medium depth feel like just using that progressive nature before you go in and try to change skin. There's just layers to it all. And so, and then of course, sanitation, not talking about it enough. Like I feel like in the program, we beat it over your heads, like clean up, clean up, clean up. But we're trying to as have it where you're sanitizing after every client and then you're, you know, disinfecting all of your tools before another client comes, things like that. I think it's just so important that we, we think that it stops during the program, but it really needs to be emphasized more in our program, especially online. I feel like also when I watch everyone's reels, we're so fixated on technique or how to sell, how to get clients in, but like nobody really talks about how clean they are. And that's what clients want to see. They, they want to trust you before they even approach you. So if you're, if if you're listening to this podcast and you want a new client, 
do some reels about you cleaning your room and cleaning your implements. And I promise you, you're going to get a few extra people that you didn't think that were, you were going to get because clients love to see the journey before they, they love to see what your space looks like before they even come. Cause they want to, they want to be a part of your journey, but they don't, they don't see anything, but you know, the few things that you, that you show. And I feel like it's so understated in our industry that nobody talks about using barberside, just barberside. Yeah, honestly, I think that you make great points in the services that you provide versus even, you know, injectable services. Like, why aren't we showing that full client experience? Why aren't we showing that rooms are actually being turned over, cleaned? I think that's really, really important. And I really am glad that you brought that up. Yeah, I feel like even if it, it would just run back our basics, if you're ever stuck in a rut and if you're ever like, I can't get any, I can't get any new clients or I just don't know what to post or I don't know what to do. I always just tell my, uh, my people go back to your basics. What is the one, two, three? It's like, think about something that you learned in class that you never even understood. And then now you understand because you do it so often. Like people who are watching us, they don't know the basics and we're so advanced that just talking about sanitation alone is kind of intriguing to some of our clients. Oh, 100%. Would you say that, you know, as a educator, are you seeing a lot of the issues with sanitation or is it more of the fact that we're just forgetting to discuss it? Well, a little bit of both, but it's just so, we we get just so caught up in technique or products or um, Instagram or marketing that we don't talk enough about basic care because like I said, we are a wealth of knowledge, but our clients barely even know what washing our face is. They don't know what exfoliation is. So just explaining to a client every single breakdown, every little thing, it helps to create a journey for your client. So then when they finally decide or when they finally have the means to have a luxury service with you, they kind of already have an idea of, okay, so they're going to wash my face doing this beautiful routine. And just like that beautiful routine that we we uh, do during a facial is basic to us, but it's so luxurious to them. So like I said, just going back to your basics and actually saying, this is what I'm doing to you because they don't know, they don't know any better. They don't know no different. And so you can really set yourself apart by just showing somebody that you wipe down your table before each customer comes or that you do a special routine, just cleansing their face and then taking it off with a hot towel. And so customers love seeing that and we don't expose it enough. But this is just me talking basics. And if you're ever in a rut on like what to post or how to enhance your business, it's all about your basics. So if someone reached out to you and was like, Jody, I have this great idea and I want to make it a business. What would you tell them to start with? Asking themselves who their client is, because you can have an amazing idea, but who are you selling it to? Who is that person that is going to invest, whether it's $2 or $200? Who is buying your product and why? Because then also, because the lash market is pretty saturated, how are you separating yourself from the next? But also not creating um, competition. And so ideally, if I were, if somebody were to say, Jody, I have this amazing idea, how can I launch? You know a problem and you are the solution. It's all about whose problem are you solving? And then you can grow your idea off of that. But also one of the first things that I'll say is just launch, <laughs> just launch it. Cause you fight and you'll never know if it's even a good idea because nobody's flooding your page to book and nobody's flooding your page to buy your product. You have to give them a reason to buy it. You have to identify the problem for them to say, Oh my gosh, I do need that was one of the biggest mistakes that you have learned from thus far that you could share with the listeners to where they would not make that mistake as a new business owner? Buying before you sell. So I, I like to buy small quantities and then I will expand. So like even just like my glue, I um, buy in smaller batches. So it's always fresh, but then I don't overbuy because what happens is you have a budget of, let's just say $200 for like one particular product, but then you still have to add on all the packaging 
that you are going to wrap that product up and make it look pretty. Um, so there's other costs that come into play. And so the mistakes that I've made were I bought too much and then I was I basically had to just give it away. So it's just a waste of money. So if you just buy in smaller um, quantities, which some some uh, factories will let you do, but um, not creating too much. Even if you say, for instance, if you like were making body scrubs, just making a few at a time and then just finding out who your customer is and then expanding from that, because you never know. Like I, like I tell my students, don't go out and buy all back bar supplies because you don't know who your clients are. If you buy a bunch of back bar acne products, but you don't have any acne clients, that product just sits there. So buy retail size and then you can expand it to a back bar size. Great advice. Do you do any like online trainings or where are you located to where if someone wanted to come and, you know, do a hands-on training with you, where would they find you? So I am in Seattle, Washington. I haven't gotten hip. I'm an old lady now. I'm not hip enough to do like the whole online thing, but also I'm really bad at marketing. And I know that a lot of my past students who have uh, trusted me enough to say, yeah, I'll take your last training off of like a flyer that had just like a date and location. I don't really have like these bullet points or like what's in your kit. But like when you meet me, you get it. You're like, oh, okay, this is what I paid for. And so because I am able to offer you more because I expand off of energy. It's kind of like when you get on stage and you, have, if you're a comedian and you get on stage, you have to kind of read the room to decide like which direction of comedy you're going into. So if I have a room of people who just want to learn the trade, I'm just going to focus all of my knowledge and all of my energy on just teaching how to make a fan. But if I have some entrepreneurs kind of sprinkled around in the room, I'm going to add my private labeling um, presentations. I'm going to add some of my uh, knowledge and like client building or marketing. So it, it kind of is just like this um, relationship that I build off of, off of the room. And so I can't, I can't even tell you, I have like this cookie cutter, like, come see me. I'll teach you how to make lashes, but you literally leave with so much more than just how to do lashes. I teach you how to create a business at times. I teach you, I teach you how to talk to men <laughs> literally it just kind of spills out. But, um, I would love to eventually expand and grow a team where I could have somebody scale my business. I can create um, small classes where I just teach how to teach lashes. Cause I do know that there's a lot of people who are amazing lash technicians, but they are, they don't know how to regurgitate this information. And I can teach you how to teach people, but I'm in Seattle, Washington. My Instagram page is bourgeois lashes. And honestly, I answer all of my DMS. So I guess it's just one of those things where you're just gonna have to hit me and then we'll, we'll just grow it. I love that, Jody. I love your energy. I can just tell that one, you're so knowledgeable, but two, you have just a passion in what you're doing. I could see that your trainings are very involved and just amazing. I should go and just like sit in on a training for some business knowledge. I feel like our conversations are always different. And just because I give somebody the same exact, exact advice or the same exact business idea, those two business ideas will never be the same because you have a different audience. Than, than the next. So one of my uh, sayings is I'm not trying to create competition, but I'm trying to like build a community. And so we have this community of people that don't gatekeep, can have the exact same vendor as somebody or same factory as somebody, but me and you are not going to have the same labeling and we're not going to market it the same. And we, we have two totally different audiences. So there's literally, there's enough money for everyone to eat. Absolutely. I love that. So anything else you would like to leave with those listening today? I would say if anybody is starting out in the industry, just to honestly just launch because you never know what direction it's going to take you and you never know what's going to fall in your lap after you launch because you're going to find out really quickly that people are not flooding your page. Nobody's knocking down your door to come get a facial, but you're so stuck on your color scheme and how you're going to execute it. But if you just do it, it starts to happen already and nothing has to be perfect in order for you to launch. You may need that little bit of 
capital to help launch what you really want to launch. So if you wanted to get that beautiful custom neon sign, but you just need a couple hundred dollars, well, there's money there. It's just, you just gotta, you gotta launch. And then if you are a seasoned esthetician and you are listening to this podcast, go back to your basics. Um, your basics are your foundation and you can create new ideas just off of the foundation. Thank you again, Jody, for coming on Aesthetic Chat with Kiki. I hope to do another mini series in the near future. I did want to know, obviously, all of your guys' feedback in terms of the mini series, but I would love to continue to highlight other aesthetic professionals. For more information on the podcast, you can follow the podcast Instagram, which is at aesthetic.chatwithkiki. My Instagram is at aestheticnurse.kiki. The website is aestheticnursekiki.com. You can find the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, even YouTube. And don't worry, I still have episodes coming from season three of the podcast. This was just a little mini series. So continue to enjoy those episodes. Until next time, beauties. Bye. Bye.